Hi, my name is Margaret and welcome to Rear Facing Toddlers. During this lockdown for the coronavirus, we're all obviously stuck indoors, so I thought I would do something a little bit different and offer question and answer sessions on YouTube. They're not live. The questions have been asked on the Facebook group Car Seat Advice UK, and I've made a list of questions that I'm going to go through. And the first car seat that I'm going to be answering questions on is the Axkid Mini Kid. Now, I've here I've installed it on my demo rig just to show how it should be installed correctly. But for the questions, as I go through them, they will be about how to position the child, how to adjust the harness, that kind of thing. I will uninstall it and turn it around on this seat because otherwise you won't be able to see it properly. So the first few questions I got were quite similar to each other. Both Rebecca and Laura asked how to know whether the baby is big enough for the seat, how to ensure that the recline is okay and how to fit the wedge. So I'm just going to get up, get a few of my demo doll babies and answer those questions. So these are two of my babies. Um, this one wears roughly six to nine month clothes. This one is brand new. I haven't actually got any clothes for it yet, but it's roughly a size nine to 12 months. It's a bit difficult to exactly give an age to these dolls because of the way that their bodies are shaped. But this one is definitely smaller than that one. So I'm gonna put this one in the mini kid first to show why this baby would still be too small and too young and why this one is okay. The mini kid's headrest has automatic height adjustment, but for a young baby, I always think it's better to push it all the way down and lock it into place. And this way I'll be able to show you the correct height on the dolls that I'm about to use. So with this baby now sat in the seat with the shoulder straps on his shoulders, if I lift this strap up you'll see that the shoulder is here and there's quite a bit of a gap before you actually get to where the strap comes out of the seat. So when you then pull that down the strap goes up past his shoulders almost level with his ears and there's quite a big gap between the headrest in its lowest position and the baby's shoulder. So this baby I would say is still just about too small. Now this baby is just a little bit taller in the torso, about an inch or two, and you can see the gap between the headrest. If I slide my fingers in between the headrest and his shoulder, I'm touching both, so there's no gap at all. So that's fine, the headrest is low enough, so this baby would be tall enough. The cloth size that this baby wears is roughly 12 months old, so that's about 75, 80 centimetres. Um, it really totally depends on the baby. I have sold this car seat to babies as young as six months. I've also had babies as old as 15 months who weren't quite tall enough yet. So babies vary enormously in size, but I'd say roughly at about a year old, as long as the headdress is close enough to the shoulders in its lowest position, the baby is big enough. So the next question was, how do you know if you've got the right recline angle and how do you know when you need the wedge? Now this is the wedge, which is an optional extra. Um, it costs 15 pounds and the reason that it doesn't come with the seat is because you don't need it in every car because every car is different and in some cars the recline, or not the recline, the slope of the seat itself is much steeper than in others. So if your car's got fairly flat seats, you don't need the wedge. In a car where your bottom is considerably lower than your knees when you're sitting down, then you do need the wedge because otherwise a rear facing seat like this will be too upright. Now normally when I install the seat, I always pull the recline bar out as far as it can go, which is like this. And in this car, or in this seat rather, the bar touches the seat, the recline angle is fine and there is no problem. But I'm just going to make the bar a little bit shorter to show what might happen in a car with steeper sloping seats, where if the bar then touches the seat, the backrest is too upright. So if you want to get the right angle, you've got a gap here and you need to fill that gap with the wedge, which you just pop underneath with the higher side. If you look at it, sorry, let me just get it out again. If you look at it, you'll see that this side is a little bit lower than that side and the high side needs to go at the back. So you pop it under, put the bar in that groove and now you've got a wedge which has created a better recline angle on the backrest. The next question is from Hannah and she asks, with other seats for younger children, the child's head has to stay below the top of the seat. Why is that not the case with the mini kid? To help me answer that question, I've installed this infant carrier on my demo rig. This is the Avionaut Pixel with a newborn baby doll inside it. A rear-facing car seat's backrest catches the child in a frontal crash, which protects their head, neck and spine. The more upright the seat, the more effective this is. But a small baby needs to be reclined at a 45 degree angle to keep their airways open and to stop their head from falling forward. And at this 45 degree angle, the whole head needs to be contained within the seat shell to protect their neck. When the child gets bigger and heavier, it is no longer safe to be that reclined. Seats for bigger children are more upright so that in a crash, the child will simply be pushed into the seat's backrest. And as long as the child's eyes are no higher than the top edge of the seat or its headrest, the neck and spine will be protected. So that's why in car seats for older children, the whole head doesn't need to be inside the seat. I also got two questions from Eleni. She first of all wants to know 
What is the best recline by age and can I remove the recline at all to gain space or will that not help? The best recline by age is the rule generally is the older the child the bigger and the more upright they need to be. But you don't want it to be so upright that their head falls forward when they're asleep. So generally in most cars when you pull out the recline bar to its most extended setting that will be enough recline to keep the head back but is still upright enough for an older child so that's fine. If you've used the wedge to begin with when the baby was really small and um, that was quite reclined when they were little and they're now a bit older then it's probably a good idea to remove the wedge. Sitting the seat more upright will take it a little bit further back from the back of the front seat that it, it should ideally touch so when you sit it more upright you can then move the front seat a little bit further back so it does gain more space but it does maybe reduce the child's leg room a little bit and make them more upright. So it's a case of getting the balance right between the child having enough leg room and enough recline to keep their head back and the front passenger having enough room. So it's just a case of playing about with it a little bit just to see what works best in your car. The second question is when to remove the insert. Now, um, I don't actually have my insert here so I can't show you, but the mini kid, when you buy it new, it comes out of the box with an, an insert for a smaller baby just to make the seat a little bit more snug around their little body. The insert doesn't have a weight limit on it and or age or anything. I would say you probably take it out somewhere between one and two years of age. But it completely depends on you and on the baby and on how comfortable they are. There's no weight limit, so it doesn't really matter when you take it out. Right, the next three questions are all quite similar, so I've bunched them all together again and I will just demonstrate them all in one go. But they are, one is from Holly that says, how do I fit my three-year-old in the seat? And she would also like a complete installation. I do have an installation video separately, which I will link to at the bottom in the description, um, but I will just quickly install it on this seat once I've answered all three bits of this question. Peter is the next one and he says, how do you harness and tighten a little one incorrectly because the headrest moves? And Caroline wants to know, how you, do you know if you've pulled the straps and headrest far enough down because she feels like she pulls hers too tight sometimes and the headrest sort of wedges her child in? So I will answer those three questions all at once now on my demo seat. So to answer this question, I'm going to use this doll and this one wears age two to three clothes. It's a little bit on the small side, so I think she's roughly the size of a two year old. It's the biggest doll I have. And I have loosened the car seat's harness and also raised the headrest all the way up to the top and unlocked it. So I'm going to put her in the seat now, get the buckle out from underneath her and her arms in the right place. I've now put the doll in the seat. I'm just going to do up the harness, grab the two bits of buckle, put them together and click them down. Then pull up the straps to take all the slack out of the hip straps and then you pull the harness and as you keep pulling the headrest comes down to the child's shoulders. The good thing about the mini kid is that you never need to make any adjustments to the harness height or headrest. It adjusts itself automatically as you pull the harness tight. So it will fit any child aged from roughly one to six without having to make any adjustments. And you know that the headrest is at the correct height when you've pulled it down to it just about touches the shoulders and that's, that's where you stop. So I will then let it click back up a tiny little bit because that locks the headrest from coming down any further when you then do the final tightening pull on the harness to get it nice and secure without it digging into the shoulders. So when I answer these questions, I put the seat just loose forward facing on this demo rig, but obviously you're never going to use it forward facing in a car. And Holly also asked how to install the seat from beginning to end, which I will now demonstrate on this seat. So I've now turned the seat around so that I can install it rear facing on this demo rig. Now the first thing you do before anything else is pull out the recline bar, which when it comes out of the box is tucked all the way under like this, but it's better to have it a bit longer. So you squeeze this lever, pull the bar all the way out and then reposition the seat in the car. Then you need to open the blue seat belt clips on either side of the car seat and they stay open when they go up. You then pull out the seat belt, give yourself enough length and pass the buckle up from underneath through the hole in both the shell and the cover. Still, again, make sure you have enough length. This seat belt sticks a little bit. Then you pass the belt underneath the cover, grab it from the other side and pull it up. And then you pass it straight back down through the hole in the shell and buckle it in. Oops. 
Then push down on the seat whilst you pull the top layer of seat belt really tight to remove all the slack from the lap belt. Pull it through and lock this clip into place. And on this side, you only lock the lap belt into the clip so the diagonal belt does not go down in the clip, it stays above it. So then you just close this clip and lock that one down as well. Now normally, before you install the seat, you would have installed your tether straps in the car and they attach to the front seat's runner rails. Obviously, this is a demo seat, so it's just got these little brackets here, but just to explain that that's where the straps go. But I'll do another video of how to do that in the car properly. What you then do, I'll start with this one, is pull out this strap from here. There is a one-way reel in here, so when you pull this down, if you stop too early and you hear a click, it's locked and it won't go down any further. So then you need to go all the way back up and start again. Hold the bracket in place, pull this down and click it onto there. One side and then the same on this side. And that's it. And then to tighten up the one-way straps, you just need to give the seat a bit of a push and a wiggle. You'll hear the straps clicking into place. And when they no longer click, they're as tight as they can go. And the last thing you need to do is drop the leg down to the floor. The leg has a button on this side. You press the top to release it. It will go down to the floor. Then you need to pull it until it clicks into place and that top part pops back out again. And that's the mini kid fully installed in the car. So now I'm just going to put the baby in one more time. Here you go. It's always easier to post your child in feet first and then swivel them round as you get into the car. Make sure she's not sitting on the buckle. Take the straps over her shoulders. She has very long arms, this one. And this one. And then grab the buckle. It's actually the straps are a little bit short. I'm just going to make them a bit longer for this. Click them into the buckle. Pull the straps up through the buckle. Make sure there's no twists in them. And then hold them up and straight. And then the headrest will come down as you tighten the straps. Give them one more tug just to make sure they're tight. And there we are. Emma and Eleanor both asked how you can stop the straps from twisting. Now, car seat straps do sometimes twist. In some buckles, the slit here, where the strap comes through, is a little bit wider than it is on some others. And in car seat buckles that have a slightly wider gap there, it is possible for the straps to become twisted, especially if you pull them in and out quite fast. So if you do find that yours have got twisted, it's usually just because it's got a little bit bunched up and then if you slide the buckle along it can sometimes end up like this which is obviously not what you want so you need to make sure that every time you put your child in it's nice and flat and not twisted if it has got twisted completely so you've got a twist here you will also have a twist down here so then what you need to do is fold the strap into a triangle and just slide the buckle along and then it will be the right way around again like this oops like that. So it's very, very important to always check that you don't have any twists in the harness. So when you fasten the buckle, click it into place, and as long as the hip straps have no twists in them, there won't be any twist further up either. So you always make sure that the hip, hip ones are flat, and then the rest will sort itself out when you tighten it. And there you go. The last question for this session comes from Catherine. Catherine has both a Move and a Mini Kid, which both have two different buckles. And she says she finds the buckle on her Mini Kid very easy to fasten, but on the Move, she needs, it's almost like she needs a second person or a third hand to hold the red buckle clip down while she clicks the buckle into place. Now, from the way that Catherine described her question, I get the feeling that she's got this buckle here on her move and this buckle on her mini kid. I have it the opposite way round, which proves that it's not a case that because the move is a cheaper seat, it has a different buckle. It's simply because over the course of 2019, AxKid used two different types of buckles and whichever one you got was basically a surprise when you opened the box. They are a little bit different, but neither of them should be impossibly difficult to close with one hand. So this is my move, which has the slightly bigger looking buckle with the metal pieces at the bottom. So you put the two parts of buckle together and then you click it into the bottom with it in one go with one hand and then tighten the straps. I'll just do it one more time. So it should just, you hold it with one hand, hold the buckle with the other and just push down with your thumb until it clicks. And this is the other buckle, which should be just as easy to use as the, the one that I just showed you on the move. So you open it with one hand. So this one, as you can see, looks quite different. It doesn't have any metal bits here. It's just got two little black prongs. But again, you just put the two halves on top of each other, click them down into the buckle with just one hand, and it clicks really easily. So 
Let me just do that one more time. Loosen the harness, open the buckle, put the two halves together, click them into the main part of the buckle in one go with one hand, and that's it. If you are having trouble clicking your buckle into place, there probably are some crumbs or some dirt or something trapped inside and you'll need to clean it. Sometimes you can just shake it upside down and whatever's in there will fall out. Sometimes you may need to prod it a little bit or even run it under a cold tap, but it can be cleaned and once it's clean, it should work perfectly. And the way to remove the buckle from the car seat is just to turn the car seat upside down. You'll need a screwdriver to undo this little black screw here. And then once that's out, you can turn the bracket sideways and slide it through the hole and the buckle will come out through the top. And then it's ready to be cleaned. And if it is really bad, you do need to run it under a cold tap. Then do make sure that it's properly dry before you put it back in the car seat. And that was the end of my first question and answer session. Thank you very much for watching. If you do have questions about this or any other car seat, you have the opportunity to ask those questions on the Facebook group Car Seat Advice UK. If you're not a member yet, you'll need to request to become a member, which will be approved. And then I will post when I'm ready to do another video and give you the opportunity to ask questions. And I will go through those questions in my next YouTube video. So you just need to keep an eye out to see which seat's going to be next. So thanks for watching and I'll see you soon. While we're all cooped up indoors during this um, lockdown for the coronavirus, I just thought I'd do something a little bit different and do... Q like, Miles came in the room and he came in the shop. Oh, a rear-facing car seat. No, see, I've already done it wrong. I can't even read. <laughs> oh, nice! Shall I do that part? <laughs> you asked for the noise. <laughs> you didn't tell me that. The whole head doesn't need to be within sight. Within sight? <laughs> Shit. It's not happening. <laughs> Turn it up. I think this is fine to do that. The finger is in front of the lens. I would see it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, stop. I wasn't ready.